Hi, everybody. Welcome to Divine Conversations. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, hello, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning to the channel, what up, y'all? <laughs> so welcome to your readings for the second half of May. Please keep in mind that these are general readings, so please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Please do not try to fit anything in where you don't feel like it fits, yeah? This is... Uh, these are readings for a lot of people, so just if it doesn't resonate with you, boop, just let it go and move forward. Um, I do want to, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you guys so, so much for all of your support. I am very, very happy to be able to do this for you all, um, and I, I honestly couldn't be more grateful for the kind words and the feedback that you have been giving me about um, how the readings are resonating with you. I am so grateful that you guys are here and I am lovingly continuing to do this for all of us, yeah? I also want to thank those of you who have donated to the channel. I really, truly appreciate it. I am doing this for free, um, so, you know, any sort of energetic exchange is greatly appreciated, yeah? You know, I'm extending the energy and you extend the energy back when you donate, so, I thank you all so, so, so very much. Let's see, what else? I am available for private readings. You can find uh, the readings that I offer in the de description box below, as well as my email address. If you would like to order a reading, just shoot me an email and let me know how you would like to proceed. Um, please make sure to take a second to read over the different options that are in the description box below. That way you can either choose what you want and we can streamline the order process, or if you're not quite sure, you can just send me an email slightly describing what's going on and usually I'm able to pick up, you know, which reading would be best for you. If you don't have a question, don't worry. Just come forward and we will talk, yeah? I can just channel the energy and see what, give you whatever messages Spirit wants to send you, yeah? So I believe that's it. How about we get into these readings? Yeah? Let's do it. Taurus fam! What's up, y'all? Happy birthday to my fellow Tauran sons. Mine was on May 6th, and I had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I hope you guys are enjoying or will be having a great time for your birthdays. Um, yeah. This is your reading for the 15th of May to the 31st. So let's get into it, shall we? All right, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Taurans, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Taurus for this time period of May 15th to the 31st. Thank you so much, spirit. All right, Taurus, let's see, let's see. Oh yeah, so in the beginning of the month, we were talking about potentially needing to initiate something, even though you may not have been the one who technically should be having to, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I do find that um, that did manifest in my life in some way. It wasn't exactly what I thought it was. Like, it's not like I need to, out of the blue, just reach out to someone. But I was presented with situations in which um, I had, I crossed paths with, with this person. And I was, I had, so in crossing paths with them, I had the opportunity to at least say hi. Say something, you know, I didn't have, it's not like I had to, like, call them or email them or something. That's just me personally, so... So I, I'm bringing that forward because the universe is asking me to give us an example of being as open-minded as possible. Even though there's a message coming through for us that we may not like, we're being super stubborn about it and don't want to budge, the universe is just asking us to keep an open mind because it may not necessarily be what you initially think. Yeah? All right, Taurus. Last shuffle for you. And let's get into this. All right. Overall energy. Whoa. 
we're starting out with the Hermit. And I say, whoa, because literally the Hermit was the first card that came out in the overall energy for Aries. And I just finished that reading. And my Venus is in Aries and my Sun is in Leo. This could be interesting. So we've got the Hermit. We've got introspection. Um, we've got Virgo, if you want to look at it from a Zodiac point of view. Um, we also have the Knight of Wands. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not the Knight, the Page of Wands, but this is the Princess of, this is called the Princess in this deck. We also have the Ten of Swords. And we have the Magician. Excellent, Taurus. So, yo, check it out, Taurus. Y'all, man, we be manifesting, y'all. Hey, can I get an amen? Okay. <laughs> no, we really are manifesting. And this also, I feel like this is definitely coming from Taurus. The, at least the manifestation end of what we're talking about here. But if there's another person involved, 333 on the counter, if there's another person involved, I'm also getting that they're taking on this magician energy as well. So if you're in some sort of relationship with someone, business, love, family, friends, whatever, if you're if you're working on something with, with another person, both of you are adopting this magician energy. Okay. Um, we have the Page of Wands which in this case could either be you stepping into a brand new spiritual reality, Taurus. Um, this could be Taurus or this could be someone else that is connected with you, Taurus. It could also be someone that you're cross-watching for. Um, step, it could be stepping into a new spiritual reality. I like to see, sometimes I like to see the pages as um, a level up right because when you level up things become more difficult because you're in a, in a you're in a different setting you may not necessarily know um have your footing in this new reality um but pages are also messengers okay so we could very well have um someone who wants to send a message to another person especially if we're talking about a love relationship here and this message wants to be sent because there is an end of a uh, really destructive mental cycle here with the Ten of Swords. Thankfully, the Ten of Swords is upright. And so to me, this is saying that someone is literally either through and has moved past this, or they're, it's not so much that they're in the process of moving through it. If if I were to say that they were in the process of moving through it, then, it, I, then I feel like it would be reversed. Here, it's upright. So I feel like they've either moved out and they're done with this mental process, or they're almost done, okay? Excellent, excellent. But also I'm picking up that whatever you're manifesting here with the magician is a result of all of a bunch of introspection that has happened is the result of a new spiritual leveling up if you're experiencing that. But it's also more importantly is, uh, is um, the result of this ending of this mental cycle. Okay. First in the storyline, we have the 10 of wands and this is in reverse. Now this one I'm feeling like um, this is the practical steps of releasing whatever is being released here with the Ten of Swords. And um, it's of a spiritual nature, especially because it's a wand suit and we have the Page of Wands, which in some cases for you guys is saying, or for us really, is saying that you may have reached a new level of spiritual um, attunement, I just heard. Ooh, that was good. Here, though, the Ten of Wands is reversed. So we're talking about the practical aspects of it. We're talking about um, the physical burdens that you have dealt with. Um, and now, no, this the, the Wands are not necessarily physical. If we're really talking physical, we're talking pentacles. But I'm just picking up with the energy that this is you actually releasing these burdens that you have been carrying, okay? So what I'm getting here is that the mental part, the mental aspect of this is done. You've made your decision. You saw how mentally you've been tied to something and you've reached the end of that. But now, now you're in the process of manifesting this ending. So you're actually in the process of releasing the, the, um, the actual burdens. So that would be why the Ten of Wands is reversed. And we also have the Seven of Swords in reverse. And I really like seeing this because this is a, a release of being sneaky of lying, of cheating, of stealing, of stealing from yourself, lying to yourself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's excellent, Taurus. That is really, really excellent. And if we're not talking about the Taurus, if we're talking about someone else that is connected with this, that's excellent for them too. Next, we have the hanged man. So this is a period of, um, I just heard introspection, but mainly because we have the hermit here. So 
you Taurus, you may be going into a bit of a hermit mode, but this is self-imposed, okay? This is you trying to gain a new perspective. And it's coupled with the Seven of Pentacles. Excellent. So um, you could be going through a period, Taurus, or whoever we're talking about here. They, or you, could be going through a period where they, they completely isolate themselves. Um, with intentions of seeing things clearer, of seeing a different perspective. The Seven of Pentacles can talk about procrastination, but here, because it's positively aspected in that it's upright, I'm picking up that the Seven of Pentacles energy could be yeah, a little bit of procrastination, but there's a reason for it, and that is to gain wisdom, to gain enlightenment, to see things from a different perspective, to understand um, how they have given rise to the fruits of their past labor. What is this fruit? How does it taste? Is it rotten? Is it juicy? Is it sweet? Do I want to grow this fruit again? Do I want to grow similar fruit like this? Okay, if I want to grow similar fruit, what's my process in doing that? Okay, well, what was my process in the path? You get what I'm, you understand what I'm saying? Like, these are the, this is the thought process. This is, to me, that is what the Seven of Pentacles um, tends to um, speak to. Interesting. And we have two sevens here so far. That's cool. And they're right next to each other. One is upright and the other is reversed. That was just a cute little thing I wanted to point out. Next, we have the chariot in reverse. And already I'm picking up that this is wanting to move forward um, with something that has deep emotional value to you or to them. And we have the Prince of Swords or the Knight of Swords in reverse. Um, so I'm getting that these energies are one in the same, really. The fact about it is that they're just, they're blocked right now. Okay. So this is the chariot, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> the sun is coming through, so it's kind of making this bright little spot here on my in my ta um, <laughs> in my room. But um, uh, I apologize if that's affecting your your view of the screen at all. Um, the chariot in reverse is a blockage towards wanting to move forward towards something that is really of great emotional value to you. And the Knight of Swords, in this situation, it's not so combative. In some cases, it could be. This could be combating the opposition. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Also, my window's open because it's a gorgeous day and I want the fresh air. <laughs> um, it could be battling the opposition. It could be rushing forward and like cutting anyone out of your way, basically. But what it's mostly talking about for the most part overall, it's about wanting to just move forward move forward full speed ahead but unfortunately that cannot that cannot happen right now for whatever reason i'm not really picking up a specific one um now actually it, it absolutely is connected in most cases it's connected with this period of isolation and uh wanting to reach enlightenment about a situation oh goodness this i just realized this hanged man card is super gaudy I mean, it's just this person. I mean, I mean, this is very um, ritualistic and uh, in, in an indigenous tribe sort of way. But this person is literally strung up by the skin on their shoulders. Lord, but that is speaking to the self-inflicted nature of what the hanged man is. The self-imposition here. Um, but so this this desire to move forward full speed ahead but the actual action of that being blocked has to do with this moment of forced um, introspection, forced isolation in some cases. Moving forward, we have the star healing, wishes coming true, coupled with the fool in reverse. So this is also, now this is talking about a leap of faith, okay? Wanting to take a leap of faith, but again, it's blocked. There could be some fear or trepidation surrounding this taking this leap of faith. But what I'm but what I'm also getting is that that we're that whoever we're referring to here could be you, Taurus, could be them, could be both of you. Um, if we're talking about a relationship in that sense. Um, healing is happening so that this leap can be taken. Okay? Um so it's like the fool energy is on hold a little bit here is what I'm feeling. And like the final process of healing, I'm also getting a lot of communication with the divine, um, with higher selves, higher centers, in order to prepare for this next step, this leap of faith. 
Um, in speaking to zodiacs, I don't. I'm not. I don't know if the hanged man is associated with one of the signs. Please correct me if I'm wrong. You can throw that down into the comments section. But the chariot is um, is Cancer, and the star is Aquarius. And as I said, stated earlier, the hermit is Virgo. Yeah. So Taurus, you could be dealing with any of any one of those signs. Um, yeah. We're good. Moving forward, we have the Ace of Wands in reverse with the Five of Cups. Ah, okay. So the Ace of Wands is reversed because of now. If we're talking. If we're talking, I wanted. To, I literally just wanted to say a soulmate relationship. Um, if we're talking about a deep soulmate relationship, could even possibly be a twin flame relationship. The Ace of Wands here are this this inspiration towards a passionate action, a new passionate reality, is being blocked because of, in a sense, crying over spilled milk, which is represented here by the Five of Cups. Unfortunately, in this situation, the Five of Cups is upright. So there is still a lot of regret um, in relation to... Hi, Birdie. In relation to... Um, um, a passionate new beginning that was offered in the past. And also wanting to offer this, this passionate um, Ace of Wands, this passionate new beginning in the current moment, but feeling like it can't happen because of what may have happened in the past. And the one thing that I really want to point out to you guys, whoever of you that are still in this Five of Cups energy, um, Yes, the three cups in front of this woman have spilled, but look behind her. There are still two cups, okay? So if you feel like all is lost, obviously it isn't because you still have two cups behind you. And I want to point out specifically for those of you who are really feeling, really feeling this energy right now, the three cups that have spilled probably needed to go and probably needed to go a long time ago, right? Ooh, yeah, I know y'all felt that one. So let them go. Turn around, grab those two cups behind you, and move forward to your brand new start. Okay? Because if this is a situation in which, you know, you feel a really deep connection with someone and you really want to, say, start over, try again, or whatever, I'm feeling like chances are you have a good chance with that person. You have to approach it correctly. Okay? I would say approach the situation from a place of, I learned from the mistakes of these cups that have spilt, but I still have these two cups and I want to offer one to you. Can we try this again? And see what happens, right? If it doesn't work out, then this, then that situation just wasn't for you. And that's okay. You still got your two cups, boo. Okay, okay. <laughs> Moving forward, we have the Six of Pentacles in reverse with, oof, the devil. Now, the Six of Pentacles in reverse is talking about imbalance between give and take. And that is clarified by the devil. The reason why there was an imbalance in this, in this relationship, between give and take in this relationship, was because of attachment to devil energy. Um, attachment to those people or situations or um, whatever that were not for of your best and highest good at all whatsoever. It was, in that sense, the devil is talking about, and what I'm picking up here is the devil is, was manipulating this person, whoever we're speaking of here. It could be both of you. If we're talking about a relationship here, it could be, now that this also could be a work relationship, don't get me wrong. This could be a business relationship. It's re This is a general reading, so fit this into your life however it resonates. But it could have been one side like either side, or it could have been both sides that were stuck in this devil energy. Like in some scenarios I'm picking up, both were both individuals or both parts of the situation were, were rooted or were attached to devil energy in some way. And one was, was not giving as much as they should have or anything at all in return to someone that was like way over giving. And then that person that was way over giving was, was in a codependent state of mind um, and was just continued to give and give and give, knowing full well that they really weren't going to get anything back. 
And then this other half of the equation that was on the receiving end just kept taking, kept taking, kept taking, and may have even been manipulating the situation in order to give just enough to get to keep, to keep this other person to just keep on giving, you know, and even in some cases, give more the next time, hoping that maybe if I give a little bit more next time, things will come around, things will turn around and, and, you know, shit can pop off. You know what I mean? Like, so this is... So, so this is a clarifier. I'm not saying this is what's happening now. I just heard it's not. This is not happening now. But this is why there was that imbalance in, in whatever way that you're experiencing or you have experienced this. Yes. Moving forward, we have the Eight of Cups in reverse. Now, this came out in the Aries reading too, as well as the Six of Pentacles in reverse. And we were talking about how we were talking about an imbalance between give and take. I might have to close the shades here because it looks like my screen is being affected by all this gorgeous sunlight and I may, that makes me so sad. Yeah, that's better. Okay, sorry guys, but I want you to see what's going on here. So, the Eight of Cups in reverse with ooh, the Queen of Swords. We got Queen Bee on the deck, y'all. So, um... Eight of Cups in Reverse is talking about, in this situation with the Queen of Swords, it's talking about being in the process of moving away from something that is no longer fulfilling you. And that's exactly what it was talking about in the Aries video. If you have Aries in your Sun, Moon, or... Uh, well, if you're Aries Sun, you probably would watch that first. But if Aries is in your Moon, Rising, or Venus, or you're, you're connected with, this is resonating with you, with someone... Um, that has Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus, uh, I would encourage you to watch that video because there are probably some messages in that one for you as well, as there were for me, because Aries is in my Venus, or my Venus is in Aries. But here we have Queen Bee standing her ground and identifying the places or the situations that no longer serve her. Okay, so this is why the Eight of Cups is in reverse. It's not like someone is not moving away. It's like they're in the process of it. And they're taking a, a, a strictly no drama point of view when it comes to this judgment is what I just heard. Absolutely. Um, if at any moment someone's up, someone is showing you or showing them that they're about to be about that drama, cut. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. So this Eight of Cups really is what I'm picking up here is not so much a refusal to move forward, it is a process of moving forward. It is a process of identifying all of the situations that are just filling your life with drama and instantly just cutting that shit out. Yeah? Finally, we have, oh man, I love this card, the Knight of Cups. And in this deck, it's called the Prince of Cups. Coupled with, oof. The Three of Wands. So the choice has been made. In some situation, the choice has been made. And and, and this, if we're talking about love here, is that Rosa? Anyway, uh, Rosa is this adorable dog next door that I absolutely love and wish I could go play with, but she's always behind the fence next door. <laughs> anyway, um, the Knight of Cups is a passionate, passionate offer, is an offer of love. Is someone coming forward and saying, hey, I love you. And... The Three of Wands is stating that, um, Taurus, you may be waiting for this ship to come in. Um, or someone, if, if you're, if, if we're, if this is the other person for you, Taurus, they may be, they may be waiting for you to bring this message forward. Um, but the Three of Wands is also talking about the action steps towards getting to this offer of love. How, whatever that, however that resonates with you. It's literally the process, like the two of wands, for me, the two of wands is um, choosing which path to take. The three of wands is preparing and embarking on that path that has now been chosen, okay? In this situation, the main thing that I'm picking up here for either you, Taurus, or this other person that we are talking about, that we, we, may, we may be talking about, this, I feel like this is really like prep time. In the sense of like cooking a meal, this is the moment where you put together your mise en place, yes? Um, and if you're not familiar with what mise en place is, that's when you, you get all of your ingredients 
and uh, you like you chop up all your vegetables and your and your and you get all your spices together and you just you you place it all together in like their own individual dishes or whatever and you have it ready to go so that once you turn that fire on you can just cook just throw things in it's already ready you don't have to take the time to you know what I mean and like potentially burn something because you had you didn't you know you didn't chop your garlic or you burn your garlic because you didn't chop up your mushrooms or your onions like I've done a few times um so yeah this I what I'm really picking up here is someone wants to come forward with a message of love and so in this sense now the preparation has started now the action steps are being taken to set the stage for that offer okay oh wow all right guys Taurus fam there is your reading for the second half of May I love you all so so dearly I am wishing the rest of you a happy birthday when it comes and I wish the uh, the first half of us a happy happy birthday once again um, and I look forward to connecting with all of you for the first half of June. Can you believe we are almost halfway through the year, guys? Where does the time go? <laughs> Much love to you all, and I will speak with you soon. Take care. Bye.